Good morning and welcome to the Shared Lutheran Ministries of Fayette County. I am Pastor Jill and I am the interim pastor here for the Shared Lutheran Ministries. We are here at Warrington, St. John's Lutheran Church, Warrington, and we have Harry Shelberg with us as our assisting minister again. Thank you, Harry. Um, today we will be celebrating Holy Communion, so I invite you to get some bread or some form of bread and some form of wine or juice and to set aside for that part of the service where we will come together and share communion. We believe that Christ is truly present in his body and blood, and we believe that Christ can come into your home, to your worship space, and be present with you also, just as Christ is present with us in the bread and wine here today. So this is what's going on for the next week. On Monday, the Amen Food Pantry will be at 9 a.m. On Tuesday, Welka will be meeting at Fayetteville at 10 a.m. Wednesday, we have our Advent Soup and Worship at Reutersville at 6 p.m. Thursday, the Fayetteville quilt Quilting Party will be at Jeanette Brown's house at 11 a.m. And Saturday, we have our Breakfast Bible Study at the Birkeland Party Barn at 7.30 a.m. Sunday, Reutersville will be having their Christmas dinner right after worship. And then on Monday, Warrington will have their Christmas dinner at 5.30 p.m. Today is the second Sunday of Advent. Let us begin our worship with confession and forgiveness. We begin our worship with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be God's name forever. Amen. Beloved, now is the time to wake from sleep. Let us confront our sins and confess them to the one who is merciful and just. God of new beginnings, we confess that we have not welcomed your holy reign. We have strayed from your paths. We prepare for war instead of peace. We dishonor one another and your creation. Purify us with your refining fire and set us again on your way of love, that we may bear fruit worthy of repentance and welcome your coming among us. Amen. People of God, a new thing is growing in our midst, a tender branch, a living sign. By water and the Spirit, you are joined to this wonder. You have put on Christ, and your sins have been washed away. Rejoice in the way of the Lord. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, nurture our growth as people of repentance and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lighting a candle each Sunday in Advent helps us to focus on the coming of the Savior. Isaiah had the same intention. He pointed us toward the coming of the Messiah. We remember that the first candle showed us the peace that would enter the world through the Savior. On the second Sunday in Advent, we hear Isaiah's words about the hope the Savior gives to the world. When the Messiah comes, the world will be a different place. There will be no hatred or violence. No one will be hurt and everyone will live in peace. This is the image Isaiah paints for us. The wolf and the lamb living together in peace. This peaceful kingdom is our hope during Advent. As we light the second Advent candle, let us remember the words of Isaiah that give us hope. A little child shall lead them. First reading is from Isaiah, the 11th chapter. Isaiah describes the coming of a future, ideal ruler who will renew David's royal line, the stump of Jesse. Gifted by the Spirit of God, this ruler will reign with perfect justice. Enmity and danger will be restored to harmony and peaceful coexistence. And now the reading. A root shall come out from the stump of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf, and the lion, and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm is reading us from the Psalm 72. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son that he may rule your people righteously and the poor with justice, that the mountain may bring prosperity to the people and the hills in righteousness, 
Let him defend the needy among the people, rescue the poor, and crush the oppressor. May he live as long as the sun and moon endure from one generation to another. Let him come down like rain upon the mown field, like showers that water the earth. In his time, may the righteous flourish, and let there be an abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. Blessed are you, Lord God, the God of Israel. You alone do wondrous deeds. And blessed be your glorious name forever. And may all the earth be filled with your glory. Amen. Amen. The second reading will be from the book of Romans, chapter 15. God's promise to include Gentiles within the circle of God's blessed people has been fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Christians live out their unity by welcoming and encouraging each other, just as Christ has welcomed them into God's family. And now the reading. Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus so that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God, in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs, and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the people praise him. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles, in him the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent! for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locust and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him and all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork in his, is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
Grace and peace be with you on this second Sunday of Advent from God, our Creator, and our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. Have you ever wondered why John the Baptist is not on Christmas Christmas cards? I mean, think about it. When was the last time you received a Christmas card? Or better yet, when was the last time you sent a Christmas card with John proclaiming, prepare the way. But yet, I've seen several cards out there depicting the peaceful image of the wolf and lamb together with the proclamation of peace on earth. So what's the matter with poor John? His proclamation of preparing the way is very much a part of the Christmas message. I guess sending out greeting cards with the image of John the Baptist with his camel hair clothing, with him eating locusts and honey, would have the same effect as it would if I preached last week on Isaiah about turning our weapons, our guns, into plowshares. It would not go over very well. But perhaps these images, and more importantly, the message they bring, are something that needs to be told and heard today. It is fine and well to have beautiful images that point to peace, like that from the Old Testament reading. But have you ever thought of how this peaceful and serene time is going to happen? When we hear of this story of peace, We think that one day God will come down and with the snap of the fingers, this peace will suddenly give way and reign in our world. As much as I love to think of peace coming in this manner, I don't think it's going to happen magically or overnight. I think that you and I have a role in it. This kind of peace, it's going to take effort on our part, and it will begin when we start listening to Isaiah's message from last Sunday, that is turning our weapons into plowshares, and again hearing John's message of preparing the way of turning to God. As one of my favorite Christmas songs goes, let there be peace on earth, And let it begin with me. Peace on earth. It begins with us. Peace begins when we start taking to heart the message of God's prophets of old and new, to love and to trust one another. I came across a blog from Jan Richardson while preparing for today's lesson. She wrote this beautiful message on today's gospel text that came about from her drive to visit family for Thanksgiving. She says that as she is driving down the road, she thinks of the path that we make and of the path that John the baptism is pointing to. And she writes this about it. She says, I thought of what it takes to make a way, how it is that we create a passage from one place to another within the landscape of the world or of our own inner terrain, how we must discern the materials to use and the tools, how crucial to learn to navigate, to reckon, to read the lay of the land, how we sometimes find a path as much by stumbling as by skill, how we may have to tear up a road and make it again in a different direction. But I think the Advent road is perhaps not like this, that it is not one that we can fashion from our striving and our skill that when John the Baptist comes over the wilderness horizon, smelling of camel's hair and his lips dripping with honey and with fire, 
he is pointing toward a way that we can make only by what we give up, what we shed, what we let go of. The path, this journey to peace, it's an inward one, and it begins with letting go of things, whether it be grudges, anger, hate, fear, or distrust. The season of Advent, of preparing the way for the Christ child, it's very similar to the season of Lent. John's presence, as Richardson reminds us, calls us to see that beneath the twinkle lights, the trimmings, those things that permeate these crisp pre-Christmas days. There is a terrain there that is more spare and elemental, a landscape in which we learn to turn away from all of those things that distract us so that we can indeed welcome the one for whom we are waiting. This turning, it's at the heart of John's message to his hearers. Repent, he calls out, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. The kingdom of heaven, it has come near. The Scottish they call the breaking in of God's kingdom has a thin place. And I believe that we catch glimpses of these thin places daily. And sometimes we see them, sometimes we do not. I remember a time a few years ago when I experienced the nearest nearness of God's kingdom that has had a profound effect on me, and it still does. It was before COVID. Clarence and I, we would help bring the Christmas spirit to a school that was located in an underprivileged area. A family would go about adopting a classroom and then throw a Christmas party for the children, bringing gifts and goodies for all. For this particular year, it was so meaningful to watch those children. Their joy, it was contagious. The class was mostly a Spanish-speaking class, but the smiles that these children wore, they spoke they spoke volumes. These children, they were excited on many levels. And yes, there were gifts, but I sensed that it was our presence that was the best gift for them. I remember asking one little boy what his name was in my broken Spanish. And then before I knew it, all of those children wanted to tell me their name. It wasn't much, but being present to those precious children has left me with a lasting impression, one that I will never forget. The lesson I have learned is that the value, there is value in letting go of things so that we can be truly present to others. And when we're able to do that, that is a gift. As we make our Advent journey, we are called back to the question, what is it that we have that we can bring to the Christ child? Do we bring our very being? Perhaps the better question is, why shouldn't we bring our very being to Christ? For that is what he has brought to us, not just on that Christmas morning so long ago, but every single day. Christ comes to us, bearing himself to us and for us. With Jesus' life and death, we not only have been given the gift of life that comes through God's love and forgiveness, but we have also been given a window, a door, that leads into the peaceable kingdom that we so long for. Jesus gives us a vision of what living in peace looks like, and he invites us to live the peace that he brings out 
in our own lives. Jesus came into this world not breathing fire or burning that which does not bear good fruit. Rather, he came in all humility and meekness. He seeks out sinners. He touches and heals sick people. He eats with both Pharisees and tax collectors. That beloved vision of peace in Isaiah, a shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of its roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon the one who is to come, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, and the wolf shall live with the lamb, the lion shall eat straw like the ox, and a child shall lead them. This vision, it is ours. The good news for us today is Jesus is that child. Jesus has fulfilled this vision of peace that brings so much comfort and calm into our world. Jesus is the lamb lying down in the midst of the wolves. The comfort and hope in this promise of peace, it is here and it is in our midst today. Living in his truth and peace, that is when we can discover the fulfillment of another vision. They shall not hurt or destroy on my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled of knowledge of God as the waters cover the sea. What a beautiful vision this is. And it is just waiting for us to grasp and to claim. On our journeys, may we make way for this vision of peace that Jesus, the Christ child, brings to us. Please pray with me. Come to us all this Advent season, O God bringing glad tidings and good cheer, comfort and hope. For we celebrate that marvelous mystery that we call incarnation. When you became one of us, born a baby, who grew up and lived and breathed, ate and drank, lived and died. Through him, bring us hope, bring us joy. Bring us healing and wholeness. Bring us a sure refuge in the darkness as we await for something new to be born in us. Something small and bright. A tiny flame that will carry us into the future. In the name of that light which came to save us, Jesus the Christ. Amen.
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It's at this point in our worship that we come to God offering our thanksgiving and praise. As we come to God this morning, we give thanks for you, those who are listening, those who are watching. We thank you for your continued support for the Shared Lutheran Ministries of the Shared of Fayette County. Thank you for all that you do. Let us pray. Eternal God, you make the desert bloom and send springs of water to thirsty ground. Receive these simple gifts of bread and wine and money and make us messengers of your mercy and of your love for all in need of your healing justice. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. God, you renew the church in every age. We give thanks for hymn writers and theologians, inspire teachers, writers, and musicians to delight and instruct your people. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You give us a vision of creation in harmony when hurting and destruction will be no more. Teach us to be stewards of the earth and companions to its creatures. Restore to balance and wholeness what human greed has harmed. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You defend the cause of all who were poor and oppressed. Raise up leaders who will govern with equity and serve the common good. Guide judges, lawmakers, and public officials to protect the rights of those who cannot advocate for themselves. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You deliver those in need from suffering and fear. Come to the aid of any who are exploited or abused, especially children, elders, and victims of human trafficking. Provide safety and help to our neighbors without shelter refugees, and those fleeing violence. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those serving on our call committee who discern your Spirit's guidance, God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You urge your people to welcome one another as you have welcomed us. Nurture ministries of hospitality and care in this and every congregation. We pray for people who are homebound, hospitalized, or separated from loved ones, especially Billy, Joyce, Judy, Wendy, Kim, Ivan, Gerald, Joyce, Orville, Billy, Rose, Debbie, Sheila, Russell, Sherry, Jennifer, Rhonda, Marilyn, Dennis, Douglas, Marshall, Willie, Lillian, Lorelei, Linda, Larry, and Janelda. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. The congregation may offer prayers aloud or silently at this time. <clears throat> God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You're in, you embrace all who have died, trusting in your promises and we give thanks for their faithful witness. Sustain us in hope until we are united with them in the joy of your eternal presence. God, in your mercy. 
Hear our prayer. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all of your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We continue with Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We join our voices with all the faithful, praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ invites you to this table. Come. Taste and see that the Lord is good. If you will take the, the bread or the form of bread, this is the body of Christ given for you. Now if you'll take the wine and the, or the grape juice, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the God of peace who creates all things and calls them good who makes us alive in Jesus, and who breathes on us the spirit of hope, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace. Be a blessing for the world. Thanks be to God.